It's three. the third round. Yeah. Third round. Yeah. Yeah. Three yeah. times in the yeah. second one. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, he's actually established himself now as a very, very exciting fighter. He loves to come, smash people up, go to war. All the things that he used to say that he does, he's actually doing. All right, love, let's just get on to what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pass it over to you for your questions. I'm very proud of Tony Bell, who's still WBC world champion, the only British WBC world champion. Over to you for questions, guys. Tony, you knew you were going to win, but did you think you would be a Oh, listen, there's no, there's, no, no, there's, no, no, there's no, no one in this game makes us me. I'm not joking around when I say it to you. At this weight, the small heavyweight, I mean, Glasgow, I swear to you, on my life, maybe it's just to get home safe to the three kids. That is me for prize asset. But it, to be fair, the more I keep going in this game, the t shirts I have on tonight, the more I, I fear what, what's happening. Because, like I say to you, I, I scared myself with how hard I'm going to go. I, I, I don't really care who referees my fights, I just want them to be able to save me. We'll save you. And that's the top top for me, so I'm happy I'm just getting home safe. So it's it never a gimme in boxing. 10 ounce gloves on, anyone can get it, and anyone can get hit. It's as simple as that. You'd have to understand. It's not sparring. Remember all the things he said about heavyweights he's mixed with, he's never been down, he's never done this. And I told him when we got face to face, listen, you're going to go down. And he says to me, he, he was standing right there in the middle of us. He says, I've never been down in my life, boy. I said, trust me, you're going to go down. I says to him, I might go down. I said, but no me, I'll get up because I have no mechanism in my head. Normal people have it. I'm not normal. People have a mechanism in their head that goes, you know what? I've had enough here. You do. I swear to you, I'm a kid's last. I scare myself, man. I, I, I sat in that hotel today and I think to myself, I, I, I just pray to God this is one of them nights where I've got to, got to show people how big my balls are again because uh, it scares <laughs> myself, like It really does affect me. Were you, were you relieved when he didn't get yes. up that fourth time? Yes, I was. And I was also thankful that the referee had done the job because it, I thought he could have been stopped on the third time he went down. And, and where every time I touched him clean, I, I give him the first round and, and I got bollocked for it. Thanks again. I've got a great coach. He tells me straight as it is. And I have a great team around me, a big Russian fella and stuff like that. So he tell me straight. But believe me, every time I touched him, I, I could see. I, t I tell you all the time, when I hit someone clean for the first time, the reaction on the face says it all. In the first round, I didn't hit him big to the head. I touched him to the body with a left hook and then a right hook as well. Cause it's to be, the eyes never lie. He never ever lie, and I was relieved when the referee stopped at that last one. I don't know actually how hard it was or how gone his legs were, but the left hook was just short. It was short and went right across his chin. And I don't care who you are. People are gonna slate me or say whatever they want about me and that pussy. Uh, but if I hit anyone, heavyweight, cruiserweight, anybody clean with a left hook, I'll put you to sleep. But understand, I'm under no false pretenses. I understand too. It's Russian roulette when I start training. They hit me clean. I'm going to go. Because no one's Superman. And with 10 ounce gloves on, people get hurt. So I'm under no illusion with that. Was it totally game plan to call David Hayer between rounds? No, it wasn't. It wasn't really. I, told, I swear to God, I've said all weekend. I've rejected asking questions. Elliot and, the other, and yourself asked me a question the other night on the radio. And I said, listen, I'm not being... Uh, I'm not being an arsehole. I'm not, <laughs> being, I'm not being nasty. But listen, don't ask me questions on him because he's not here to hate me. The only man in the world who wants to hate me right now, I said this his name is BJ Flores, and that's all I want to talk about. But when he was down, the kind of, I think it was the second round, he went down quite heavy. And, and end of the second. End of the second, and I looked, at, in that corner. I looked at him, and I don't know why my eyes looked at him, but he looked at him and he annoys me with that SpongeBob haircut. <laughs> and, and I just looked at him and he just, and he said something, yeah, give me a smear. He's been saying I'll get smoked all week by BJ. Well, I've just done his mate. Just beat his mate up for fun, and that's what I do. And I'll beat him up the same way. We had a sparring session many years ago. I wasn't a professional, I was an amateur, just come fresh off my first ABA title. And he got his ass kicked then, and he'll get his ass kicked now. Nothing's changed. Tony, you fight with a lot of passion, and that's what makes you so fan, fan friendly, and that's why we love oh, you. But you. Um, if you fought someone like David Hay, yeah. who, who's got explosive power himself, do you think you might have to adjust your style a little bit? Uh, I can adapt in many ways. I mean, I'm a good boxer, I fight inside, yeah. outside. You ask her, see, the thing with me is everyone thinks I'm either just a one trip, I punch you or not, but ask the top boys who've mixed with me in the States, everywhere I've been, all around the ghettos of New York, I've been everywhere from Long Island to, to just some crazy, crazy places made in America, and every yeah. single, there's never been a man who's walked my ass. 
I think I took a, a hide in the sparring once and it was off a man who was about six foot, he was nearly seven foot place, so it's no odds, and it was many years ago. Uh, it's the, I can honestly say it's the only hide I've ever been given. So, my style can adapt, it really can, and trust me, I'll ask him questions. I ain't going to be like that, them last two rounds he's fought. He's yeah. going to get someone live in front of him when he fights me. I'm not telling you it's all going to be one way. I'm gonna, it's going to be times when I'm going to have to use my brains or make it a bit messy, but trust, trust me, I hit him. He's shown vulnerabilities many times, many, many times. He's shown vulnerabilities at British level, European level, world level, and he's a cruiserweight. I'm not stupid enough to start saying I'm, I'm ready for the giants of the division. I'm not saying I'm this big heavyweight at all. What I'm saying is I'm happy to fight. People basically recognise the best cruiserweight of the last decade that, this, that the world's probably seen. The last decade, David Hayes, the most dominant cruiserweight the world's seen. Would you want the fight at a catchweight then, or would it be? Oh, man, I'll do whatever it takes. Let's see what he. Let's see what his next move is first, and then we'll go from there. But I don't fear no one. Uh, Out, outside okay. of the, um, the David Hayes fight, yeah. who would you like to go for? Unification fights. I've got a mandatory, but I'm pretty sure unification fights supersede them. So I don't know. We're going to have to contact the WC. Listen. I, I, I own the greatest belt in boxing and I'm the proudest champion in the world. Believe me when I say I'm a, I am know boxing, I'm a boxing historian and there's nothing where you're catching me out about this game, I know everything. I've been studying this game, this belt since I was a child. I love being the WBC champion. <coughs> but ultimately, I'm at a stage in my career where financially I've got three kids financially as much as I love belts and I love big fights it's about making the, the, the correct financial decisions and I have the right people around me the right team and believe me a missus who can tell me which fights I've got to make sure <laughs> I was just going to ask David before you know at the end of the second round when Tony was going back for a third I seen you like that really giving him you know can you tell us what you were seeing I was giving up my hand for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. The, I don't remember the talk in the second round. You got green. You got green. You got green. You got green. You might have said you were being a bit stupid at times, but it's that. Um, no, listen, it weren't perfect. There were things that were doing that I wasn't happy about, but that's my job to point out. On the inside, but yeah, you, you did. You did. I made miss of it. Yeah, you did. Miss of it. Yeah, did. Did. You, what, you might have missed it a lot. A lot. Um, so there was. There was. I mean, we out. My mind's a little bit under my now right now, so I'm thinking. You know, I'm picking what I was saying to him when about what's a little bit hazy but there were things that I weren't happy about but it was entertaining it was powerful it was strong um, it did a lot of good things in there and it proved again that, that you know it, it, can, it can punch it can really really punch you know? Eddie, could you talk in practical terms about you know just kind of almost flash it out that if Tony and David did could have an agreement you know where they put 210 or something like that um, how big this fight could be um, what it could do for Tony's future because it, it's definitely a lot of interest in it, yeah. you know, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, for David Hayes trying to pick up something in the heavyweight division, Tyson Fury's vacated belts, there's a bit of a mess, WBA, WBO, there's going to be opportunities coming around, but if he thinks that the likes of Lucas Brown or Shannon Briggs are really that big, then he's deluded. He should know better because he's a smart guy. You know, he's operated around business for a long time, and I believe he's smart enough to know driving home tonight, this is the fight he's got to make. Because he's on his way home. Right <laughs> 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 I don't think it'd be wise for him to go to a nightclub in Liverpool. He's absolutely not. He's in a nightclub right now, drinking up probably with his mates. But one thing, one thing I'd like to say is <laughs> David Hay has achieved a lot, and there's a lot of British world champions. But when you look back over the career of Tony Bellew, you can summarise it and say it was a light heavyweight. He beat Oval McKenzie twice, who is a very, very dangerous fighter. Yeah, everyone, no one wants to fight Oval McKenzie. He went out, he beat Isaac Chilemba, a draw, and then he beat him again. And Chilemba is, gives everybody, the no, that's, of course. And actually, you know, look at Kovalev, you know, he's a, Chilemba's a horrible, horrible fighter. Come back, box Stevenson, went all the way to fucking freeze him, wasn't it? Horrible. Quebec, or wherever it was, yeah, it was shit. Come back, move, oh, let me finish. Come back, <laughs> moved up to cruiserweight, right? Uh, 
had a couple of good wins against good fighters. Brudov, the Stos Santos, came here, had an absolute stinker with Cleverly, right? But came back from there. Well, no, no, yeah. no, but listen, it doesn't matter. He came back from there, and he came back with a great win against Mastanek, a great win against one of the top fighters, top 10 fighters in the cruiserweight division, and then went on and beat Makabu of Goodison Park. Everyone saying, he's this, he's that. He beat BJ Flores. You have to rate him as one of the top Brits right now. <coughs> You know, I know he's got a big mouth and he's this and he's that, but I'm telling you, go back over his resume. He has been in some top, tough fights, beating some great fighters. He should be up there, top five British fighters right now. Do you not think his performance against McCarthy, um is for arguably one of the performances, of, if not the performance of the year, perhaps yeah. arguably yeah. with Frampton and... For sure, Frampton but, Williams, but, you know, like, again, he's always been the guy that's sort of like, oh, he's, you know... Bell, you've got a big mouth on it, but the Macabu win was the win to say, no, no, I'm a fucking good fighter. And actually, when you look at the resume, there's so many fighters, so many world champions who actually, they don't really, you know, they haven't really beaten anyone. Look at who he's beaten, look at who he's boxed. You know, Mackenzie twice, Chilemba, Masternak, Cleverly. You know, Cleverly's now a light heavyweight world champion. He had a great fight with him at light heavyweight, beat him at cruiserweight, Adonis Stevenson. You know, even Dos Santos, Brudoff, Macabu. Now Flores, Flores is no mug. You know, you saw him come out tonight. He, listen, he was he was trying to do what he did against McCarver. But don't look at it as like, oh, we're just chasing his payday with David Hay. He's a world champion. He has achieved a hell of a lot in the sport. Hey, listen, I if I hear him, he's going on sleep. Trust me, I don't. He's not beating me. I don't give a shit what anyone thinks. So, I hit him. I'm telling you now, he'll go. He's been wobbled, 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 rocked, hit so many different times of lesser fighters than me. If I hit him clean, I don't care what anybody thinks, I will wipe him out. I don't care who it is. He, he's nothing special. He's lazy. He likes fights at his tempo. I'll hit him in spots where he's not going to like it, and I'll get in his head. That's the worst thing with someone like him. He, the, he, he's, he's a mind fucker, David. And the worst thing you're going to do is get in his head. You get in his head, and I know things about David in every single way, shape, and let me tell you, mate, David isn't everything he makes out to be. Are you thankful okay. the security would have had to stop you tonight, Tony? No, I, I, to I, I, I'll be honest, right? You think you're the boss here. Don't you think you're going to intimidate me? Because that, he thinks he, that's how he comes across. The gobshite turned up at me at my premiere for the Creed movie, and he's standing there saying, Bill, Bill of Vanny. He's looking down on me as if, as if he's someone and I'm no one. No, the fucking clown. I've done things that he could only dream of. He has no idea, mate. I don't fear David Ayer. He don't look down on me. Nobody can look down on me. And I don't look down on anybody else. I would never look down on anyone. But that's how he looks. He's got this way about him where he thinks he's better than everybody. And he thinks he's like this... Kind of, he's just this big, iconic figure. He's a gobshite who's constantly in nightclubs and playboys. Loves the lifestyle. That's what he does. And that's how he lives it. He's con in boxing. He's, he, he is everything that's wrong with boxing right now. He is the reason why we haven't got boxing constantly on the likes of terrestrial TV. Because he's the guy who's fighting clowns constantly. He's got he got that O2 arena. Them last two guys he fought, come on. Come on. He wouldn't he, he had but he was sparring better guys for the fight. He was actually sparring better guys than he thought. It's disgusting. You're turning up at the O2 to watch him against absolute clowns. And let me tell you, David is a high class fighter. He's a world class puncher and boxer. And to fight them last two guys he fought, he's conning everybody and it's wrong. Simple as that. I come back off a, off a shatter and loss to Adonis Stevenson. My first fight back was Valerie Brudov. He had double the amount of wins I had at the time. Second fight, Dos Santos, it is what it is. I went and done the movie, went into Forgotten Land for a year. Came back and fought Mateus Masternak, European champion, world title contender. Only ever stopped on his feet once by Gregory Drog, the WBC champion. And I, go to, and I just keep going in with these fights. Progressively, I just keep beating him. How many times do we need to be the underdog? How many times do people need to say, he's not that good, really, he's not this, he's not that? Well, tonight I've just gone in and absolutely exposed a man who's never even been on the floor in his career. I, don't, I can't even remember how many times I put him down. What are your commitments with the title? Is, 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 is Jaws the coming back at all? I won't even no. entertain him, not to be he's honest. A, no, he's, not, he's, uh, <coughs> he's mandatory for Aiden. I won't even so, entertain him. But, but with all due respect to Braden's, Bellew against Bradis is a great <coughs> fight. But Tony Bellew has probably got somewhere between, and he'll decide, but I would say four, 
to six fights there in his career. So, <laughs> 10 new <UV. laughs> <laughs> like And I, the, the key is to make him as much money as possible over that period. But there's not a threat of uh, the WBC nicking the belt off if you go for the Hay fight. It's not gone Oh, if we, if we took the Hay fight? Yeah. Maybe, if we move to, if we, if we move to heavyweight, then, mm. you know, maybe we do that fight in the interim, then fight Raiders. No one's taking my belt, mate. No one's taking my belt. Uh, Be quiet. <laughs> How did the pressure of defending the belt feel compared to? It was a pressure. To be fair, I was a little bit nervous tonight. I was a little bit. Not, not nowhere near as bad as Buddhist. Listen, my ass fell off my pants. This was great oh, for yeah, you, was great. but my, I'm telling you now, when I was in that dressing room with 20 minutes before that fight, I have never in my whole life been shitting it so much. I don't get scared of none. I'm scared of no man. Maybe the miss is a little bit, but I'm not scared of no man. <laughs> nothing, nothing frightens me. I swear to you, nothing scares me. But that night at Goodison, when I turned off that music, I turned down the and for 20, the last 20 minutes before the ring walk, I listened to the Everton <coughs> fans singing my name, singing Everton songs. I stand on them stands and sing them songs with them. I go nuts when we score. And, and I can't explain to you, mate, the feelings. Every time I watch it, I end up in tears, and I'm not really a... I'm a bit of an emotional person. Wait till you see that sky show. I'm telling you, mate, I was, I'm in tears. And I'm in tears because my son was there and stuff like that. It'll never happen again, but Great. it's mad. The chairman actually texted me last night. He Great said, man. Summer, I want, I want to do it again. <laughs> and I said, I can't we do might, it. We might, then. Listen, I, I, I can't go under that pressure again. It was the most, uh, what? it was the worst pressure. Tony, wouldn't you have to deal with Hay fight there? No, I think, I think the issue you've got with David Hay fight is he's looking to box in December. Right. So he's looking at Shannon Briggs, Lucas Brown, you know, that, that kind of thing. We, we, we're ready to go February, March. I've got March the 4th at the O2 Arena. That's a pay-per-view date that's locked in with Sky. This does a big, big business on pay-per-view. What date? March the 4th. Is that right with you? I'll have to want to buy the boss. Okay, so fuck it, you better up. Well, Barry Hay does big on pay-per-views. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, listen, especially listen, it does. Yeah, it does. listen, yeah. listen, let me tell you, Bellew cleverly did big, biz big business on pay-per-view. Bellew Hay does monster business on pay-per-view. Yeah, but that's a fact, he, he ain't gonna, he ain't gonna run. The other fella just throws him for his own reason. No, listen. but this is, this is a dangerous fight, but this is a great fight between a, a very good heavyweight who ruled the cruiserweight division and against the current number one in the cruiserweight division. So the belt will be in abeyance at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, this belt is like bad possession. Yeah. But, that belt. but sometimes, you know, if there's an opportunity to change your life forever, oh then, you know. And this uh, is why I have people around me, because if I was up to me, I would be in dangerous positions all the time. I have the right people around me to, to, to help. And, and I'll, I'll be honest, there's times when I need them because I'm a danger to myself. I really am. That's what I said. Seen the conversation, but what did he say back? He didn't he say just nothing, he just, he just kept saying, Yeah, yeah. He, he knows when he looks at me, I ain't fine. No, I'm trying not to swear, I'm trying to be more professional. He wasn't calling out BJ. Yeah, yeah. Was he? I didn't even realize. I, I, I swear, I thought that's what true. I, have, I haven't uh, got the mind, I haven't got it back in my mind yet, but I'm serious. I, I just, I'll punch his face everywhere. Mate. And, if I, I, I'm so happy I didn't get too close tonight. I just want I want to get in his face and tell him. So it's different saying stuff to people when people are in the middle of you. When you get in someone's face and you look in their eyes, he understands your meaning. And David knows me. I know David knows I mean it. He's not looking at someone. He, he, I don't I don't fuck about no money. When it comes to the fight, I fight. And I fight to fight. I understand what's going on. This is why I explain to you time and time again. I scare myself. When I walk to a ring, I don't see nothing but the fight. I looked at BJ tonight, and I just when they when they call on me name, you see fights got their hands up. Hey, look, listen to the crap. No, I'm looking at BJ and boy, you better know what's coming. You better know what's at stake because I ain't gonna stop, and I'm gonna get you. And if, if I get you, you're getting me. Just just be prepared. And I kept telling him all week, I hope you're ready, lad. I swear to God, I hope you're ready because I have killed myself for it's been actually 16 weeks, not 12. We, going for September the 10th and then something happened with all the other stuff and then in the end we did, they got prolonged a little bit, they gave me a couple of weeks off and then went back and, and this the only thing that's been on my mind is BJ Flores' mouth on, on tonight, I'm not getting shut away.
strongly. Do you think you've answered a lot of people who have been giving you down the banks that, that you've put BJ Flores on the floor three times and won the fight? So, you know, then people who've actually been criticising you. Can, like, well, listen, he's never been on the floor. He's fought some world class fighters. He really has fought former world champions. He's never been dealt with like that. Uh, he said to himself, <coughs> he's been in camp, he's been one of David's main sparring partners for years. You see yeah. him David, David's had to put him on the floor and sparring. Uh, he's been main sparring partners like the Shannon Briggs. He's been in the Klitschko camp. He's, he's been around all these guys. He's not no, spoke of in America. Yeah, no one puts him on the games. floor and he's respected in America. This is why. That's why David <coughs> said there's no way yeah. Belly could beat Flores. He's been saying, oh, there's no way to stop him. I told him. I said, there's no way you beat him. Yeah, fuck that, I was going to stop him. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I swore again. You <laughs> don't understand, he could not box me. When I want to box, I'm, I'm, they'll blow me on. I'm good, I'm clever, I'm sly. And, and that's what David understands well. When he sparred with me as an amateur, he was shocked at how, how easy I adapt and adjust. I can just adapt. He's going to talk, he's going to talk, but BJ's the same tonight. Give him the first round, and then I adapted. Come out the second, touched him up a few places, got a bit of a telling off. Yeah, I did try a few times, and then I just dealt with him. I, dealt, I show the level from between champion and contenders. I am a champion, and I'm a cut above the rest. Simple as that. No one's dealt with BJ like that. And I, I like I told BJ before the fight, I'm going to end your career on October the 15th, and I think I've just done it. Dave, what would be your take on Tony fighting David Tate? Come here, let's do it. I think it's a fantastic fight. I think the reaction in the crowd, you look at Twitter, you know, fans are going to want to see that fight because you've got two men with big mouths that can punch. Both of them can punch, you know, and there's people that running Tony down and saying that he's got absolutely no chance, zero chance. Listen, if Lalenga Mock can have David A's legs all over the place, a Lenga Mock was a super middleweight, really. All right, if he can have his legs all, all over the place, if he hits him on the, on the chin, he'll take him out. But vice versa, this is, we're not idiots. We, we all know what, what will happen if David A is. We, David A can punch. So it's, so, it's, so it's vice versa. Flip a coin, see who lands first, and let's, let's go. But this is, you know, but this is, this is boxing. You know, you want to see, you want to see exciting fights. Fans want to see exciting fights. You want to write about exciting fights. This is an exciting fight. It's probably the most exciting fight out there. And you both know me. He hits me, I go down. There's one thing about a big, big difference between me and him is I get up. I want to fight. I don't live the playboy lifestyle. It's a way of life for me. It's 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 a it's purely about money with him. With me, I can't give in. It's purely about money with him. With me, I I fight. I get up. You see me face first. Have you ever seen him get off my face first knockdown? Never. Like the only time I remember him getting off my knockdown was against John Mark life I don't remember really getting up and really showing a fight for anything else one time I've, I've done it how many times and I'll do it again and again and again I'm telling you I hit him I hit the Lenga Mock I hit, I hit John Mark Moma I hit him make he goes to sleep and I will hit him clean as well he ain't got the best defence we'll see Dave a final question for myself um, minus what happened after the final bell did everything go as planned tonight <laughs> yeah, you won't buy nothing. Yeah, yeah, there we go. That, 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 that was the plan. It was to knock him out. The plan was to make sure that he, he, he made him feel he's 37 years old. He's been nice now. And we knew that he was going to be And if you're making mistakes and you, and you do things wrong, then that's not following exactly the plan. So it was, it was alright. But there were things in there that, that I weren't happy with. And there were things in there that you can't. Can't get away with if you're fighting a David. Let's, it. Let's try and make it happen. Yeah, Carlsberg did pay per view fight. <laughs> 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 Cheers, everyone. Thanks for coming. Thank you.